financing ideas. In other words, would we get the money to turn our ideas into viable products or services and businesses in the creative industries? Well, there are various ways to, to get the money from other people, from uh, external sources, uh, according to different methods and different techniques, which I'll outline in this short video. The first thing to say is that uh, maybe we can do what you would call bootstrapping, you know, pulling ourselves up by our, our bootstraps and doing it ourselves in financial terms. In other words, sometimes we don't need external finance because we have enough money that we can scrape together from our own resources to start the business. And this is what I often find that people come to me and they say, you know, to set up a, a video production company, for example, you know, we need lots of equipment. This is our ideal sort of shopping list. And that equipment might come to, you know, a lot of money, you know, $20,000, $30,000. And they say, well, David, where can we get $30,000? And that's a fair enough question, but I challenge the question itself because I say, well, you know, could we start, um, maybe we can start with just three or $4,000 and maybe you have that available or you can borrow that on short term, etc. But what I mean is that sometimes we, we can start a business um, with a minimal amount of money by, you know, renting equipment in the first stages um, from and paying for that from the projects that we deliver and then from the profits of that project we have a little bit more money in the bank uh, the next project we can again rent equipment which is paid for by the the, the, you know, the, the clients the, the income from that project um, but we're building up uh, some profits with which we can buy more equipment so in other words stage by stage we can get all the equipment we need rather than having it all brand new at the beginning um, with one huge bill. So there are sometimes, you know, practical and clever ways in which we can build up the resources we need from the profits of actually engaging in delivering projects. So we mustn't become obsessed with how do we get this huge amount of money from elsewhere uh, if we can do it ourselves. But of course, there are other sources of income and it depends on the context of your particular business or the project itself. So one option is to get grants. These might be government grants or they might be uh, from uh, an arts council or um, some sort of social enterprise unit of some kind. And they will be, of course, for particular purposes. So a grant is great because it's money um, which doesn't have to be repaid, but there are always strings attached. People don't give you grants just because you are nice people, because they want something out of it. And that means you have to fulfill their criteria. Now, ideally, your criteria and, your, and theirs are in perfect harmony. But we have to be very careful, because I've seen numerous instances where people have distorted their project or their business to fit the criteria of the funding body and it hasn't worked in the end uh, they've either just failed to get the grant or if they have got the grant they've had to do things in a in a way that doesn't suit them and just doesn't work for them and it's not something that, that is sustainable into the future so we have to be very careful because you know money for nothing uh, for a grant sounds great but it's never money for nothing and we we have to make sure that there is a perfect alignment between what we want to do and, and the grants, grant funding bodies, objectives. Um, sponsorship is another option where, you know, we, if we have access to markets um, through the, the work that we're doing in our creative business, then there may be companies who want to put themselves and their brands in front of those markets. So, you know, this is a possibility. We have to be very careful about any ethical issues to make sure there's the right strategic fit between the, the sponsoring organisation and our own values. But, you know, this can work and we've got, we've seen many examples of how uh, sponsorship works, particularly in the not-for-profit sector of the creative industries. And again, I'm thinking of the performing arts 
where there will be sponsors who want to be associated with those kinds of performances to get through to the particular kind of audiences that, um, that go to those events. Another one is commercial loans uh, from banks based on a, a business plan. This is um, a classic way to start a business. You go to a bank, you have a business plan, um, they lend you the money and then you pay it back as the, the business becomes profitable. Um, that's great and it, it works in many occasions and continues to do, but it's not quite as easy as you might think because banks are increasingly um, I don't know, cautious, shall we say, about lending money. Um, very often in the creative industries, because of the nature of the work, there, are, there isn't an asset um, which the bank can use as a, as a guarantee. So if you have a factory or big equipment of some kind, you know, the bank will lend you the money and say, you know, if it all goes terribly wrong, We'll just take the, the premises, the building, the equipment off you and sell it and get our money back. But because we're dealing mainly with ideas and concepts and skills and talents in the creative industries, very often that's not the case. And then the bank will ask for personal guarantees. So even if you have a limited company which protects you personally from the business, the bank loan might, might uh, require you to sign a personal guarantee which puts your own property on the line if the business fails and you are not able to repair the loan. So these things are, again, um, a bit more complex than it first might seem, but it is certainly an option. Um, and commercial loans can come from a variety of sources, you know, not just directly from the banks, but there are now uh, things like the funding circle where you can get private investors to, uh, to lend money to you on terms that are agreeable to both of you. And then we have uh, equity investments and we see a lot of this on you know, television shows. Um, we see this in the world of very big business where, and, and in the world of startups in the creative industries and elsewhere. In other words, people will invest in your business um, in return for a share of that business. And this can be a venture capital organization or a smaller um, business angel with business angels usually being uh, wealthy individuals from the world of business who are interested in investing um, to get a share of the profits, of course, but probably also interested in advising and being part of the, the company and the project. So, you know, they can be very useful for their advice as well as their money. So there are various ways to, to get uh, equity investment, but clearly because it's equity investment, it means that you're giving up uh, a share of your business to an external uh, third party. And, you know, that means that not only do you not get all the profits, uh, they will get a share, but you're losing control. And they will have you know some power over your business uh, because they they're equity investors and then another option um, is crowdfunding and I think this is very exciting because you know through crowdfunding platforms like Indiegogo and uh, Kickstarter we can raise money from the crowd we're not going to one bank or institution to get all the money we're spreading our risk in the sense um, in terms of getting money from a whole variety of different people and the power that they can individually assert over us is quite the opposite of an equity investor because nobody has got you know nobody is uh, contributing money to such a large extent that they can then demand you know uh, some kind of decision making control of the business so the power relationship is different and it means that we can get um, money from you know people we don't even know uh, out there if we have an effective crowdfunding campaign again um, when it works very well it's fantastic but it's not always that simple and I've been involved in uh, crowdfunding projects where they've failed the first time they've had to come step back you know sort of release all the pledges of money and then come back a second time to make a feature film 
and you know on the second attempt raise the money they need through um, donations and advanced sales and the various perks that we can associate with crowdfunding. So those are just um, a quick outline of the, the different ways that we can finance our ideas to make them into businesses. And to summarize, we can do bootstrapping uh, with our own internal finances, grants, sponsorship, commercial loans from banks, um, equity investments, and crowdfunding.